Tsukini a nine-year-old kid, lives with his drunk mother. One day, Tsukini was playing in his room, which is really messy, with beer empty cans. Tsukini makes a kite, he draws a man on one side, and on the other, he draws a chicken. He ties the kite's rope to the chair and flies it from his room window. Tsukini goes down from his room and starts gathering all the beer empty cans. His mother is watching TV while cursing men calling them liars. Tsukini leaves her alone and heads back to his room which is the attic of the house. Tsukini arranges the empty cans on top of each other like a tower. He stands on a chair to which the kite is tied, trying to put the last can on the top. The winds out are getting stronger, the kite is moving due to the winds and it is moving the chair. Due to the chair moving, Tsukini loses his balance and falls on the can's tower. All the cans fall from the attic through the staircase, which grabs his mother's attention. She angrily calls him, but Tsukini is scared to answer. His mother outrages starts cursing him, and orders him to get down. Tsukini explains that it's a mistake and he did not do it on purpose. But his mother is not listening. She climbs the staircase while cursing and threatening Tsukini. Out of fear, Tsukini closes the door which hits his mother on the head and makes her fall down. He can hear her falling. He opens the door, takes a sneak peek then calls it again. He sits and hugs his legs to the chest, it's raining outside, and the kite ends up getting back to the room under Tsukini's legs. Tsukini understands what he just did, he eliminated his mother. At the police station, a policeman is taking his details, his name, age, and most importantly how his mother was treating him. Tsukini's mother used to drink a lot, they had some fun sometimes and she used to make good mashed potatoes. That's all he says. The policeman asks him about his father. Tsukini shows the policeman his kite. He introduces the man drawn in the kite as his father. On the other side of the kite. A chick, his father's chick, his mother used to say that his father liked chicks. Of course, Tsukini does not understand what it means, but the policeman understands that his father left with another woman. The policeman takes pity on the child. He informs Tsukini that he will take him to a place where children with no mother or father go, an orphanage. Tsukini still wants his mother, but the policeman explains to him she is gone and calls him by his real name which is Ikear. Tsukini gets angry and asks the policeman to call him Tsukini which is the name his mother used. The policeman presents himself as Raymond to reduce the intensity of the situation. Raymond the policeman takes Tsukini in his car to drive him to the orphanage. On their way, Raymond offers Tsukini to fly his kite. Tsukini does, he take out the kite and flies it. The kite barely flies. So Raymond puts on the police siren and speeds up. So the winds raise the kite high in the sky, which makes Tsukini a little happier. When they reach the orphanage, Raymond gets off from the car and goes by Tsukini's seat. Raymond greets the madam who is the charge of the orphanage. Raymond introduces Tsukini to her. Then Tsukini gets off the car while the kids are observing him from the window. Raymond assures him that he is going to be fine, he even promises to come and visit him. Then Raymond gets in his car and leaves. The madam invites him in, and Rosie the assistant shows him the place. Rosie shows him his bad and writes his name on his wardrobe and bed. Then she leaves him so he arranges his stuff, while she waits in the hall. Tsukini does not look fine, it is obvious that he is desperate and helpless. He opens his bag and grabs two things out of it, the kite and an empty beer can, and he puts them in the drawer. The madam introduces Tsukini to his teacher and classmates who are also orphans. At first, she calls him I care but he asks her to call him Tsukini which she does. The kids seem quiet, but on the last bench, where Simon is sitting, he makes of Zucchini's name. Simon calls Zucchini, potato which makes the other kids laugh. But the madam stops them. Zucchini approaches the last bench where Simon is sitting to sit with him. Simon pulls the chair for Zucchini, who sits in good faith. But before Zucchini sits, Simon pulls the chair from under Zucchini, making Zucchini fall. And the other kids laugh. Zucchini ignores it, pulls the chair back, and sits in his place. At the launch time, Tsukini is sitting with the other orphans, eating potatoes. Tsukini is sitting next to a blonde kid, Simon comes and annoys the kids. He then goes next to Tsukini, pushes the blonde girl aside, and sits next to Tsukini. Simon starts harassing Tsukini, Simon tries to know why Tsukini came to the orphanage. But Tsukini keeps silent, Simon goes on and calls him a rotten potato. But Tsukini does not answer, and Simon harasses him more. Suddenly the blonde girl taps the fork against the plate repeatedly, making an annoying sound. The kids do not look surprised because she usually does that. Simon gets angry, grabs the blonde girl's fork, and throws it. The kids get quiet. For Zucchini he stands up and leaves with no word. At night, Zucchini is laying down on his bed. And staring at the ceiling. He acts like sleeping when he hears the kids coming into the room. Rosie puts the kids on their beds, checks on them, and then gives them kisses on the cheeks. 
even for Zucchini who gets surprised, as he is not used to that kindness. After Rosie leaves, Simon grabs a flashlight and turns it on and off while facing it toward Zucchini. Simon is checking if Zucchini is sleeping or not. Zucchini gets annoyed by the flashlight, so he covers his face with the blanket. But Simon does not stop and keeps annoying Zucchini, saying that he is not going to let him sleep. Although, Zucchini sleeps. When he wakes up in the morning, he looks at his drawer and finds it opened and emptied. He looks through the window and sees his kite flying. He rushes to a yard and finds out that Simon is flying his kite. Zucchini knocks Simon down and they both fight. Zucchini pins Simon to the ground and threatens him to touch his things again. But they both did not notice that the madam was observing. The madam calls them to her office. When she asks what happened, Simon lies and tells her that they were playing, and Zucchini came from behind and knocked him down. Zucchini does not talk or defend himself. He only asks to go back to his mother. The madam looks desperately at Zucchini, and she sees the weakness and sadness on his face. The madam asks Simon to leave them alone. Simon leaves and the madam with a broken heart tells Zucchini that his mother is gone, she went to heaven. She finds no words but to promise him that everything is going to be okay. Zucchini leaves the madam's office, and Simon calls him a potato. But when Zucchini ignores him, Simon calls him by his name, which makes Zucchini stop and pay attention to him. In the yard, under a tree, Zucchini and Simon sit together. Simon talks to Zucchini and tells him his story. Simon's parents took drugs. Both of them and all the time, that is why Simon was brought to the orphanage. Simon knows all the other orphans' case histories. B the dark-skinned girl, her mother was deported back to Africa, while B was at school. Jujube's mother has OCD she spends her time opening and closing the fridge, scrubbing the toilets, or cleaning the house for weeks. Ahmed's father held up a store to get sneakers for Ahmed. For Alice, the blonde girl. Her father used to do creepy ad disgusting stuff to her. Her father is in jail now. But she used to have nightmares every night. Eventually, Zucchini talks. He explains that he eliminated his mother but not on purpose. The policeman, Raymond comes to visit Zucchini. And Zucchini tells Raymond about his day, with his drawings. They wake up in the morning, they wash except for Simon who always pretends that he is showering. Jujube eats the toothpaste. They then go to class, where Mr. Paul teaches them. Jujube usually goes to the infirmary because of the toothpaste, meantime they play. Zucchini is having fun in his time and adapting to his new life. But Zucchini is worried that it won't be nice when Raymond stops coming. Raymond tells him that he is not going to stop coming, and it is not his job to visit Zucchini as Zucchini thinks. Raymond visits him because he likes Zucchini. Zucchini likes him too, but their talk gets interrupted, when Ahmed throws a water balloon on him. They do not like cops, especially Ahmed because he thinks cops sent his father to jail. A car stops by Zucchini and Raymond, a girl and a woman step out of it. Zucchini and the girl look at each other. But the women grab the girl and enter the orphanage. After Raymond leaves, Zucchini goes to look for the new girl. He finds her setting in her new room. She notices Zucchini, but when she hears the madam and the woman who brought her are coming, she goes to hide in the wardrobe, Zucchini approaches her and hides with her. The woman who brought her is her aunt, she enters the room and leaves a gift for the girl. Meanwhile, Zucchini and the girl get to know each other. The girl's name is Camille. From the first day, they start going along with each other. At lunch, Simon comes and tries to annoy her, in return, she makes fun of him and fails to harass her on her first day. Alice taps the fork against the plate repeatedly, as she has done before. This time, Camille takes the fork of her hand gently and raises the hair of her eye. The other kids start to like Camille, but Simon gets really annoyed and leaves lunch. At night, Zucchini is laying on his bed, while Simon and Jujube are talking. Jujube asks why is Zucchini quiet. Simon harasses him saying that he is in love. Zucchini denies it, he is only interested to know why she is here. Simon offers him help by sneaking to the madam's office and reading her file. Zucchini looks worried but he does it anyway. Simon finds her file, firstly he makes fun of Zucchini, by saying that she is here because she eliminated a guy named Carrot who was in love with her. But then he tells Zucchini her real story. Camille's father eliminated her mother because she loved someone else. And then her father finished himself. The worst of all that Camille witnessed it all. Zucchini does not believe it at first until he sees her file himself. Rosie, and Mr. Paul who is her girlfriend, pack the kids stuff and put them in the car while the kids are in the car excited for their trip. Mr. Paul is taking them to the mountains for skating. On their way, Camille sleeps, Zucchini is about to hold her hand. But Simon steals an empty beer can which Zucchini still have from his house. Simon harasses Zucchini who gets angry and asks to get it back. Their fight wakes Camille up and she grabs the empty can from Simon. They reach the ski resort, Rosie goes to grab them something to drink, 
while they are getting ready for skating. Ahmed sees a kid wearing snow glasses, he approaches the kid and compliments his snow glasses. The kid offers him to try, Ahmed wears the glasses but the kid's mother comes and accuses Ahmed of stealing them. Ahmed denies it, she asks for his parents, and he tells her that his mother left with a man, and his father in jail. The woman does not believe him and calls him a thief and a liar. Ahmed gets annoyed and sad when she calls him a liar. She takes the glasses off him, her son tries to explain but she is not listening. Ahmed stands away from them, very upset. Until he notices something felt behind him, he looks to find that it's the glasses. He looks at the kid, who winks at Ahmed while his mother is grabbing him. The kids make snowmen and skate on the snow, and race each other. The kids see a mother helping her kid who fell while skating, they all look sadly to the boy and his mother. And the wish for such a life is in their eyes. The wish for a loving parent who loves him and takes care of him. In the night, Mr. Paul and Rosie play music for the kids, the kids dance and enjoy their time together. After the small party, they go to bed. Zucchini and Camille cannot sleep, they sneak out of the log cabin. Zucchini gifts Camille a boat made out of an empty can. But Camille's birthday was three months ago. Zucchini knew the date through Camille's file in the madam's office. Camille understands that he knows why she came to the orphanage as long as he saw the file. Camille opens up to Zucchini and tells him her story. When her parents passed away, she went to leave with her aunt, the one who brought her to the orphanage. Her aunt acts well with Camille around people. But once they are together she does the absolute opposite. But Camille feels much better in her new home now. And she is happy that she was brought to the orphanage because she got to meet Zucchini. When they go back to the log cabin, they find the other kids awake. Zucchini and Camille empty their backpacks of snow. And they announce a snowball battle between girls and boys. They cheer up and play happily all night. The next morning, they leave in a car. All the kids are sleeping except for Zucchini, he kisses Camille on the cheek and holds her hand. Then lays on her head and sleeps too. After some time, Rosie gets pregnant, and her belly grows. While Zucchini is still contacting with Raymond and sends him paintings about his life events. Zucchini lets him know about Camille too. At the orphanage, Camille is reading a book, and Alice is playing. But Camille's mood changes when she sees her aunt entering the orphanage. She goes right ahead to hear her aunt talk with the madam, then she sneaks and rushes to her room. Under the stairs, Simon is sitting with an envelope in his hands. Ahmed and Jujube ask him what he has. It turns out that it's an envelope sent from his mother, Ahmed offers to help him open it. Ahmed opens it to find an MP3 player, but Simon does not look happy about it, he asks if there is a letter. Unfortunately, there is not. The madam and Camille's aunt leave the office while talking. Camille is refusing to meet her aunt, her aunt is acting well in front of the madam. And she wishes things get better when she gets to take her at the weekend. Simon, Ahmed, and Jujube go to tell Zucchini what they knew. Zucchini goes to Camille, she is hiding in the closet. Zucchini sits near her and asks her why her aunt wants her that much. Camille explains that if she lived at her aunt's place, her aunt will get a lot of money. Camille does not plan to go by any chance, Zucchini promises her that he is not going to let her go. At the weekend, Raymond comes to pick Zucchini up, Zucchini is going to spend the day with him. Raymond heads to the madam's office to let her know. Meanwhile, Zucchini whistles to Simon and Juju, they grab a heavy bag and put it in the car. Zucchini sets in the car, then Raymond comes and moves in the car. On their way, Raymond notices that Zucchini is quiet. So he starts a chat with him and asks him about Camille. But Raymond does not know that Camille is hiding in the bag behind him. Zucchini talks about Camille, but Camille comes out of the bag because she cannot breathe in it. Raymond gets surprised. But Zucchini explains that he could not tell Raymond because her aunt will not accept it as she was supposed to be with her aunt. Raymond calls the madam to let her know, and she tells him that she has to tell her aunt. They pass by Zucchini's house, and Raymond asks him if he wants to get in. Zucchini wants to. So they enter the house, Zucchini looks around the house and where his mother used to set. Camille notices lines drawn on a column. Zucchini's mother used to measure him over the years. Raymond takes them to a theme park, they have fun together, enjoy their time, and discover each other more. Camille shoots the balloons, as her father taught her how to shoot. That reminds Camille of the accident she witnessed. But she overcomes it and because she shoots all the balloons they get the biggest bear. The woman in the theme park thinks that Camille and Zucchini are Raymond's kids. Raymond is about to explain but he retrains and thanks her. Back in the orphanage, Camille's aunt is angry and frustrated about Camille leaving with Zucchini. The madam and Rosie try to explain but she does not listen to them. It is obvious Camille does not want to go with her aunt. Camille's aunt decides to get Camille by herself. The madam and Rosie are frustrated with her. On her way out of the madam's office, Simon stops her. 
Simon gives her the boat that Zucchini gifted to Camille. Simon tells her that it's Camille's lucky charm. She is about to refuse it. But Rosie comes out of the office, so Camille's aunt acts like a good aunt, takes it, and goes on her way. Unusually, Simon looks excited about it. Raymond takes Zucchini and Camille to his house. They love his place but they notice a picture of a little who is Raymond's son that lives far away from his mother, and Raymond does not see him anymore. Camille and Zucchini go on a tour of the house and they get surprised by his bedroom which is filled with plants. Raymond allows them to take the room for the night. At night, Camille and Zucchini are playing in the graveyard. Camille is on a swing, and Zucchini is pushing her. Camille tells Zucchini that she was not sleeping in bed when they were coming back from the ski resort. Zucchini looks embarrassed but Camille does not look annoyed about it. She approaches Zucchini and closes her eyes. And Zucchini does the same and they kiss. They get interrupted by Camille's aunt, she shouts at her, and grabs her, while threatening Raymond for taking Camille. She argues with Raymond but eventually takes Camille and leaves Zucchini sad and lonely. In the orphanage at lunchtime, the kids are not eating. And refusing to eat, Rosie asks them why they are not eating. The kids are running a hunger strike. Rosie ensures them that she is going to see the judge and he is going to decide. And she might come back. The kids are all sad and missing her. Camille receives a letter from Zucchini. She sits in her room, which is the laundry room. With a mattress bed on the ground. Zucchini reads the letter, the kids went on a hunger strike but it didn't work out. And lets her know what is happening in the orphanage. The boat Zucchini gifted Camille is by her mattress, she grabs it, but she notices something in the boat. She grabs it and it turns out to be Simon's MP3. She plays it to find a record by Simon, who asks her to listen carefully. The next day, Camille and her aunt go to the orphanage where they are supposed to meet the judge. In the car, before they step out of it, Camille's aunt is stupid and tramp like her mother, and she is going to use her stupidity for her good, and Camille dug her grave with her own hand. Camille's aunt gets out of the car, and as usual, she roughly grabs Camille by the hand. While the kids are waiting by the door and observing the scene, Camille waves to them with the boat as if it is some kind of a sign. In front of the judge, Camille's mother plays the good aunt, promising to take care of Camille's education and health. In addition for the unlimited love she is going to give to Camille. The judge notices that Camille is quiet, and Camille's aunt tries to benefit from that, talking about the trauma Camille has been through. The judge asks Camille if she wants to live with her aunt. Camille does not reply, and again Camille's aunt tries to benefit from Camille's escaping with Zucchini. But a voice interrupts her talk. It is her voice threatening and scaring Camille. The voice coming out of the MP3 that was sent to her by Simon. It turns out that Simon has planned for it all. Camille recorded for her aunt when she was abusing her in the car a couple of minutes ago before she come in front of the judge and act like an angel. The aunt rushes to grab the MP3 and stop it, but Camille prevents her from doing it. The judge orders her to stop. She stops and finds no choice and no solution to resume her evil plane. She stands up and walks out of the office and out of Camille's life. Now Camille is back with her friends in the orphanage where she is treated well. They all gather and have a feast while they are disguised. They laugh, eat, enjoy their feast and enjoy Camille's comeback. After the feast, when it is time for Raymond to leave, Zucchini asks when is he coming back. Raymond has talked to the judge because he would like to be Zucchini and Camille's foster home. Zucchini looks like he likes the idea of having a family. The judge has already told Camille. Raymond gives Zucchini time to talk to Camille and decide. Simon was observing and listening to the whole conversation and he is not happy about it. At the feast, Camille stands to say a word, she thanks Simon for her help, but when Camille talks about her life with them, Simon steps in and talks about Camille and Zucchini leaving. The other kids get upset, and Simon leaves the feast. He heads to his room and listens to loud music. Zucchini goes after Simon approaches him, and starts explaining. Zucchini says that he is not going because it is not fair to leave them. Simon is not listening, so Zucchini lays a hand on Simon's shoulder. Simon immediately knocks Zucchini down, and unexpectedly he advises Zucchini to go. It is really hard to get adopted for children as big as them. Simon gives a hand to Zucchini. They hug in a warm scene. Raymond is taking photographs for the kids to keep them as memories before Zucchini and Camille clear out. They bid farewell to each other. Then they move to their new house. Where Raymond measures them and marks them with a pencil like Zucchini's mother used to do. Then he shows them their new rooms, and joy fulfills their both hearts. Even Camille cries, and Zucchini wonders what happened. Camille could not explain. But Zucchini could and tells her that we sometimes cry.